the Fallout series is loaded with reoccurring elements as any successful franchise would be. Among those is the seemingly universal currency, bottle caps. Yet, Bethesda's handling of caps have left some with a sour taste. Did Bethesda ruin caps? In the original Fallout, the humble bottle cap was the chosen money, likely because such felt fairly post-apocalyptic in nature. However, come Fallout 2, it was replaced by the NCR dollar. Caps became little more than a reference in-game, as an old, unbelievable unit of currency. In tactics, they were exchanged for ring pools and the Brotherhood scripts, though Caps as currency once again existed in Brotherhood of Steel. When Bethesda acquired the Fallout franchise, one of the things they made sure to do was bring back Caps perhaps for the same possible reason they were introduced, the post-apocalyptic feeling. Perhaps because they acted as an effective marketing tool. Or perhaps it's as simple as it being a thing in Fallout 1, so Fallout 3 should have it too. Maybe all, maybe more. Now, as mentioned, there are no doubts criticisms of such a move. Naturally, there are defenders to the idea as well. I will present some criticisms and defenses, discuss currency systems, and the role Cap seemed to fulfill, as well as give my own personal opinions. Let's begin. I found three main criticisms and three main defenses. Let's start with the criticisms. First is that there's no real lore reason why this form of currency has become the accepted standard on the East Coast, when prior to this is that it was just a West Coast thing. In the original game, the lore explains was backed up by the hub merchants. For Fallout 3 and 4, nothing. It just existed because it did. Eventually, this was somewhat resolved when Fallout 76 came around, that being that the White Spring Resort was having a cross-promotional deal with Nuka-Cola to use bottle caps as a form of accepted currency by the robotic staff a bit before the bombs dropped. The robots of White Spring still accepted this after the war, causing survivors to build around the cap as a de facto currency. The issue is this does not necessarily explain why it existed in 3, and especially 4. We just had to assume 76 influenced those games with no real confirmation. The second biggest criticism is a bit of an offshoot of the other reasoning. It just feels unbelievable that so many micro-nations would accept a single standard of currency. Some feel that these post apocalyptic societies should have their own forms of money, if not focused on a bartering system. Perhaps some do the ring pull like Tactics did. Perhaps others develop their own money, a type of note or coin. This is something that New Vegas touched on, currency created by the NCR and the Legion. But still, caps were used as the default standard and because of that, their impact felt diminished. Whether there wasn't enough time to complete the feature or it just didn't pan out well, everything in the game was still valued by the cap, and at best, the rest felt like they were cosplay money. The third criticism is more about personal preferences, perhaps brought on by the last two. Some fans are just honestly exhausted of caps, much in the same way they're exhausted of the Brotherhood of Steel, Death Claws, Enclave, and Super Mutants. Some fans feel like caps were forced into the iconic status by Fallout 3, since the only other game at the time that used caps besides Fallout 1 was the much hated Brotherhood of Steel, although the ring pull of tactics is a bit similar, making it a sort of spiritual successor. Although with the iffy canon of tactics and the non canonicy of Brotherhood of Steel, it effectively makes one the only real game that used caps prior to Fallout 3's release. This iconic status seems to compel Bethesda to shove them into everything they can, pushing off the organic growth a fictional community would have otherwise. Of course, this does run the risk of having change to have change. While it would be more sensible as far as individualized culture formation, it may also feel unnecessary for many players and fans of the franchise. If caps do the job well enough, why change? Which gets into the first defense. It just works. They're a practical type of money since caps are easy to carry around, being small, they're lightweight, recognizable, and exist in a limited quantity. This has been stated by a number of fans over the years when caps are brought up and even made its way into a 76 loading screen. To get more to the point, they make a very good video gamey type of currency. Think of them as the stand-in for the much recognized gold coin that most fantasy RPGs have, from tabletop to video games, or septums if you want to go by Fallout's older adopted brother, The Elder Scrolls. I want to emphasize the video gamey aspect as they're only practical in small quantities. In large quantities, they would be cumbersome to carry as there's no individualized denomination. A Nuka-Cola cap is worth the same as a Nuka-Cola quantum cap, and that's worth the same as a beer cap. Carrying around 10,000 caps would be a challenge, but again, video game logic. We could also hold 10 jackets and 400 grenades in our pocket. 
Another rather commonly championed defense is that there's some basis in real life for what we perceive as an odd, relatively easy to find item becoming money. A very regularly brought up example, there have been cultures that use seashells as a form of money and became a source of global trade for a while. I will be getting back to the seashell example in a bit. For now, let's just say that the argument states that if certain cultures can decide that shells are money, then it should not be an issue that the East Coast could collectively decide that caps are money in the followers. Again, I'll be getting back to this. Like the third criticism states that the tighter caps, this defense is about enjoying them. To these defenders, caps are just followedy. They have been around since the first game, they have an iconic status, and they give a unique flavor to the world. This is a purely subjective take, like Criticism 3 was. But still, personal preferences do take priority over some opinions despite rationality. There's different types of money. Depending on the source, it can range from five to seven types. However, we'll be looking at three types, fiat, commodity, and representative. Fiat money is a type of money that is only valuable due to a governing force declaring it as such. Within that government's land, that money is considered legal tender. The item exchanged itself does not hold much value as they are simply paper and coins. The only reason they hold value is because a governing body and public agrees that it has value. Commodity money is a more tangible form of money. They have value of some kind and are traded for goods and service. This type of money could be about anything that has value, such as precious metals, rice, alcohol, tobacco, and jewelry. Representative money are easy to carry items, typically paper or coins, that is backed by a type of valuable commodity. In a sense, representative money is kind of a merger of fiat and commodity. The representing item has little value on its own. It's only valuable because it's a receipt of a commodity, which does have value. The most famous example is paper money representing gold or silver, but there are other examples, such as a note representing tobacco. In the Fallout verse, there have been a few examples of these types of money. NCR dollars, after the Brotherhood melted their gold reserves, are a fiat currency. Legion denarius and aureus, if I'm pronouncing that right, are made out of precious metals, gold and silver, and those metals hold a lot of value. Since that's the case, the Legion coins also hold value and therefore are a commodity money. Caps out west are backed by water, and therefore a representative money. Before the NCR Brotherhood War, the NCR dollar was backed by gold, which meant it was also a representative money. Now we look at the East Coast. There's three possible situations for how the caps on the East Coast exist under the current timeline, that being as of Fallout 4. Number one, 76 cap situation spread its influence to DC and Boston. Number two, traders from the West Coast influenced the East Coast. And number three, each region individually accepted caps. If the answer is 76 cap influence, then in some regard, it's a bit like the hub. It's a safe trading community like the hub was, and the merchants here, robotic vendors, accepted bottle caps as currency. The difference comes down to backing. Fallout 1 states that caps were backed by the hub merchants, but developer commentary goes into a bit more detail, ultimately saying that caps are backed by water, which makes sense. Water is just tough to get in a desert environment. In that regard, water has plenty of value. It's kind of needed to survive. With the robot merchants of White Spring, it's not entirely clear. There's a number of shops ranging from weapons dealers to restaurants to even the toy store. Factions reprogram some robots to sell their merchandise utilizing the cap system. Without clarity, it feels like a type of fiat currency, dictated by the White Spring robots under the defunct Nuka-Cola promotion, rather than any actual governing entity. Wastelanders just accepted it. It sorta makes sense for the short term, but not so much for the long term. That being said, the Wastelanders update for 76 brought in gold reserves. Perhaps caps eventually start getting backed by gold, creating a representative money? That's purely predictive speculation with no real basis. If the West Coast is the influencer, then it likely would have been done by the hub prior to the NCR forming and creating their own currency, or the short window of time the NCR existed and still used caps, or after the gold reserves were destroyed and the hub merchants reintroduced the water-backed caps. The idea would be that caravans traveled eastward with a large supply of goods, asking for bottle caps as payment from the locals. The regular trading could influence the regions and then they formed traveling caravans that also head to the east bit by bit. That said, the only trade I found was the New Canaanites, who were discovered by the NCR a few decades prior to New Vegas. That would fit in the timeline of the return of caps, but that relatively shorter time period of a few decades makes it seem unlikely. 
If each region individually accepted caps, then there's no given reason. We can only speculate and make guesses. Now, remember how I said I talk about the seashells? Under this consideration, others have pointed to the shells as an example of a seemingly worthless item being turned into currency. The problem is they don't typically get into the why. Why are they considered money? Or rather, why are they considered valuable? The reason is actually pretty simple. Shells were considered valuable by these people because they had a use. Some ceremonial, some ritualistic. For some, they're considered a type of body decoration. They're basically jewelry and charms. For some cultures, the cowrie shells represented good luck, fertility, and sexual pleasure, mostly attributed to the shape. I'll let you put that together. Some shells were deemed worthless by some countries and others valuable. What I'm trying to get at is these cultures had reason to value shells prior to them just being used for money. They didn't go, you know what, I'll give you three of these slug houses or some livestock. Shells are money now. No, the shells already had value, either decorative or superstitious, but value. And that makes them a form of commodity money. False caps aren't a commodity. A commodity would have to have some type of value put on it whether they're valuable because they're usable, valuable because they're rare and rarity can raise personal social status, or valuable because of superstitious or religious reasons. They're not precious metals. Sure, alumina steel, what bottle caps are made out of, would have plenty of use, but you could grab a lot more of that from just about anywhere. Post-war America is pretty spoiled for choice in that regard. Damn near anything can be scrapped. It'd be a pain to look around for these tiny little circles. You could get a lot more steel out of some random bed frame in a random home than you could bottle caps. So usability is out, except for the incredibly niche use of bottle cap mines. They're certainly not rare. In short of the blue star bottle caps that had an urban legend associated with them, there's not a lot of superstition surrounding them. And we don't know if there's any backing for the East Coast caps. So they're probably not representative. That only leaves Fiat. Personally, I'm having a hard time imagining someone would be convinced to use caps without an assurance from a strong authority figure that these random bits of dented metal are worth anything. The reasons caps worked out west is because you could redeem them for water. So the only one that makes sense is the White Spring situation. Did Bethesda ruin caps? You know, at first I was planning to go, it's a little messy, but not too bad. But man, as I was doing research and looking into this, writing down the script, I found myself going, okay, this kind of works if you look at it like this, but then there's this problem and this problem, talking in circles, my brain started to hurt. Oh boy. Yeah, it's kind of confusing if you think too hard about it. If you just accept it as is and don't look past the surface, it's fine, I guess iconic marketable fallout thing. But if you care about things making sense in world, then it has a bit of an issue. Different cultures would come up with their own forms of currency or just stay in a bartering system for smaller societies. Personally, I think I would like if each main region had their own money, a game specific currency. That might be the best way to go about it. At least it would be easier than a complex system where every main settlement had their own. Maybe a post Caesar Arizona still happened to use the Legion coins due to the Legion retaining some control rather than caps. Maybe Diamond City had their own currency, and it was so influential it spread to Good Neighbor. Although I imagine Bethesda would be tempted to make it baseball cards or gloves or something. Of course, this does forgo the Cap's iconic status. You lose a piece of easy marketing ability, but it also does attempt to make a new one. That said, most people like Caps and generally don't think too much about it. Maybe safer to just stick with them and never really elaborate on the in-game whys because I imagine only dedicated fans really care about that. But what do you think? Like Caps? I'm tired of it. Want something new? Let me know in the comments below. A very special thanks to my channel members, especially the members thrice over members like that crazy game developer and Denny McPhee. If you wish to support me and join us well, I'd be more than happy. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe, all that typical YouTube stuff. Thank you. Have a good one.